So this is uh, Dan here from Vagabond Buddha. We're at the airport here in uh, Guayaquil, Ecuador. And uh, behind me here is a, a counter where you have to get a green tag on your luggage. With the Bronco. So you put all your luggage through there and you get a green tag on your checked luggage. And then after that, uh, you go over here to this counter and you pay $20 to get your pass into Galapagos. Uh, there's an online webpage to save time if you go to TCT Galapagos um, and enter your information. Then when you get here, they'll have it all there and they can print out your ticket, uh, not for your airline, but to get into the Galapagos and you pay them $20. And then with your tags on your luggage and your ticket for $20, then you can go to the airline and board your flight or get your boarding pass, then wait for your flight. So save time, do these two. Uh, before you arrive at the airport to get your ticket. So we just got off the bus and we're on the boat. The one dollar boat per person. No, no, no. And there's a bus up there that is going to take you from the airport to this boat for free. And then all you do is cross this little channel right here and get to the other side and then you then you take a uh, taxi so, um, to the city or a bus so we'll see what we'll see that next one we get some of the local street art here in uh, Galapagos on Santa Cruz Island Doesn't seem to be much of a, sh a pelican shortage here. They're everywhere you turn. These are just sitting on top of a tree. This park is just full of a bunch of drunks taking over the benches. Uh, uh, the police ought to do something about all these drunken seals around here. So there's some beautiful street art here on the way to Charles Darwin Research Center on and behind it and discovering with you is a cemetery. This is Dan of Vagabon Buddha here at Ruta de la Tortuga, the path of the tortoise. And we're at the Darwin um, Research Center here in Santa Cruz, Galapagos. Join us. There's a great little exhibit here that talks about the various, um, uh, I'll call them lizards for lack of a better word, that are here in the islands and the various food sources and how their bodies have ad adapted to it. Um, very interesting. First stop. One thing you note quickly about this path is it's full of cacti and the ground itself is mostly, as you can see, lava rock, which is very difficult, um, as you know, for plants to grow in and uh, thrive. And it, as you may also know, the Galapagos Islands are uh, volcanic in nature. They were created from the sea bottom and they arose uh, as volcanoes. Here we see that uh, Darwin was just 22 years old when he left England uh, on de in December of 1831 um, on the Beagle. Uh, he was an unpaid naturalist. And his ideas, here it says, Darwin's ideas were shared by many great thinkers from the 1700s. Here it says that uh, Darwin collected many uh, uh, samples, I guess they're calling them, and he noticed uh, differences and similarities and wondered if it had to do with their food source. It's just a really lovely path through this uh, Darwin Research Center. Um, it's a raised walkway, all wooden, with these beautiful cacti. Hi, I'm Chang Hui from Hobo Venture. Now we are in the Galapago, the Darwin Center. We will go to see the giant 
tortoises. Follow me this way. Yeah, they're doing some tor here. They're doing tortoise research, and these are the births apparently on each island uh, by month. It appears, and then they talk about how they incubate them. Here, the giant tortoises to bring them to life. As you can see, here's one cracking its shell open, and they weigh them, take care of them, and whatnot, and move them to accordingly. And here are the stars of the day. See that little fella right there getting a bite to eat. I should say big fellow. And uh Chen Hoi is enjoying filming them. Here's a little nursery with the little fellas, the different ages. I guess they separate them by age apparently. Because the ones on the left are a little bigger. See? That is the giant tortoise. <laughs> Small, they're like one meter, two meter. It's like 100 years old at least. No, 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 at least 50 years old. The 100 years old already died. We will see him later. I will show you the longest tortoise in the Darwin Center. This is George. He lived until 2012 here. Uh, this species is now extinct, and um, he lived to about 130 years. He was uh, quite smart, and as you can see, his neck uh, is quite long, and he was adapted to eat uh, food sources that were uh, high. And uh, he probably died at 130 years of age because he was on an island called Pinta, uh, which is in, also in the Galapagos, and um, the food source was not that good there, and, and um, so he probably suffered malnutrition for many years before he was brought here. Um, so he died a little prematurely. Normally they live to about 150 years on average, but this species is now gone. Same with the George. Hey, Mr. Tortoise. How are you George today? Right. I know George's shell is shaped different. See how it doesn't come up as much? Oh, I just see there's long legs. Yeah, he's got long legs. He's almost the size of George. He might even be bigger, but it's a different species. That species is extinct. Extinct? Ex extinct means there's no more on the planet. They're all dead. The entire species. Were you a naughty little turtle? Huh? You had to do time? Did you rob a bank or what? Did you rob a bank? I'm not the biggest fan in the world of zoos, but they call this a Of research scary. center, so they, they're being, they're dying off, so they're trying to multiply them before they let them go in the wild. It's all, it seems like prison to me. Time to see the turtle. So huge. God, so big. What do you think about how many meters that they have? Two? One? I don't know, they're probably, they're not as long as you, but yeah. maybe a meter and a half. Wow. It's the first time I see the turtle so close and so big turtle. How much does George weigh? How much did he say? I, I don't know. 150 kgs? I can't remember. This guy might be, this guy might actually be bigger than George. And you, you see the neck, it's like, it's like a snack for me. Do you think he needs some... Moisturizer? So you're thinking tree. I know you're thinking that. Don't pretend otherwise. You're thinking, what kind of tree is this? Cool bark. It's a real tree. It's not cement or something. And then you're like, what? It's a cactus. Cool.
cool looking yellow iguana. He's rapping with his buddy on the other side. I don't know why they have them separated. Maybe they're both men. See his buddy's bigger. Can you see? Okay, I'll show you the other side. There's his buddy. Oh, he's headbutting the he's headbutting the screen. That's one tough iguana. Hey buddy. I think they're vegetarians though. So this is Charles Darwin here. We're at the Charles Darwin Research Center and I would say he's probably one of the three most significant events uh, in the last couple thousand years. Uh, first I would say Copernicus when he figured out that the earth was at the, or the sun was at the center of our universe. Um, Second, I would say Darwin's theory, although not solely his, uh, contributed to by others, that the concept that um, evolution is the source of the present nature of each species rather than uh, creation. Uh, and then the third one's probably uh, man's ability to launch a spacecraft, land it on the moon, and come back safely. Um, one thing that always puzzled me is, is why um, one of religious faith, the fact that God, just, if, assuming you believe in God and you were of religious faith, why do you have to reject the concept that God would create species through evolution? Um, why can't you just uh, come up with the concept that evolution is one of God's tools to make things better over time? So I was always curious to me. I wasn't. All, it's not clear to me why people are afraid of. Science, where these people are afraid of science. So, anyway, thanks for stopping by. So, when you're in the Charles Darwin Research Center area, if you just go through this gate right here, they have a beach with some iguanas apparently. It says at the entry that you come to this black lava beach and you'll think you're looking at black lava, but suddenly something will move and it'll be an iguana. There's a couple of those black lava iguanas. Maybe one will move and you can see it. We'll keep walking towards them. You guys, at some point you need to back up. Man, you're ugly. Can you see him? Pretty cool. Black lava iguana. So this is uh, another beach near to the lava center. It's uh, lava, a stone here. And it's very quiet and you will film a lot of the marine iguana and the red crab. It's a very beautiful place. But we are heading to another playa for swimming and snorkeling. In most of the world, you would buy a ceramic pelican and put it on your fence near the sea. But we're in the Galapagos, so the pelicans place themselves on your fence. Dan here, we're at the dock. We've got a, a boat here for 80 cents US uh, to the German beach, it's called. And, uh, there's our driver, and now we a water taxi. And we're gonna head over in that direction. See, there's no shortage of boats here in the uh, Puerto Arroyo Harbor and Santa Cruz Island in Galapagos. So we've taken the boat over from the main harbor, I'll call it, in Santa Cruz, Galapagos, to this little walkway. As you can see, it's a charming little area. All sorts of little establishments here of different choices, 
places to have a drink or something to eat along the path. Along the path here, there's a place called the Blue Heron. That's this one here, in case you're looking for kind of a unique boutique experience. It's got it's on this little uh, lagoon, as you can see. Very beautiful. The path is mostly on this raised landscape, and it's there's mangroves, and it's at about sea level, it seems. So then there's this beautiful beach you come to. And behind these bushes here, there's some mangroves. Walkway dumps out onto this public beach here. Probably wondering, what does the Pacific Ocean look like at around the equator? Well, the Galapagos is the answer to that question. Isn't it beautiful? So after a swim, we're back on the trail. We saw signs that sell La Grietas, and so we're going to check the trail out. You can see it's very rugged ground here, this trail. This is the salt lake on the trail. They used to salt fish with, apparently. It's a Galapago tradition. By the remoteness of this place and just the unforgiving nature of it, I mean, we're basically standing on lava rock. As you can see, these plants somehow are growing in this. And there's cactus and just very rugged bushes, but, but not much here. And somehow uh, things are growing here and life is, life is being life. So uh, there's about a one kilometer walk once you get off the boat and you get to this area. It's called La Gretas. And uh, what this area is, is it was a powerful uh, volcanic eruption that just literally melted all of this volcanic rock pushed it out to sea and left this huge crevice uh, and it's full of brackish water which is half salt half clear water and it's really a nice little swim um, lovely walk so you see these <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say that just enjoy the taste <laughs> so cool and luckily I have a surfboard I'm not even there to look down <laughs> Even there, you can see a lot of the beautiful fish, the color fish, the big fish like this. But I'm not there to look down until I go to the end. <laughs> and this is a big one and a fresh, not really fresh. Let me tell you how it tastes. Oh, it's so good. You have to try it when you get. We tried to find a $10 lobster. It's a fish market, but it doesn't have. I have to pay $30. So sad, right? Okay, I have to eat right now. I don't know if you can see it or not, but behind me is uh, Las Chiamoles. This is the center part of Santa Cruz Island. Um, they're, um, these two volcano sinkholes here that has been dormant for quite some time, but it's part of the, um, one of the tourist attractions here on Santa Cruz. This is Dan here. Uh, we're standing above uh, Los Giamoles. There are these two sinkholes that were large um, areas of unstable ground that uh, after the magna, magna, magma cooled <laughs> and collapsed. And uh, they're probably 200 meters apart. This one's a little bigger. And it's one of the attractions here in uh, Santa Cruz, the Galapagos. There's also a lot of beautiful bird life around here, so thought we would share with you. Okay, start. Dan here, Vagabond Buddha. We're in the lava tunnels uh, on Santa Cruz. Uh, Galapagos.
and it's a 300 meter, meter tunnel and this was cleared out by lava an explosion of lava pressure millions of years ago Hello, so now we are in the lava tunnel here near to the tortoise farm, I forget the name they have three of tortoise farm out here and I will show on my video, you know, the description over there so just enjoy the tender first and make sure you wear the cloth is a dark color because over there you can see it's very you know very narrow and I'm very smart, I wear my raincoat so it's protect my cloth. Let's go. Mm. Looks like you just, the earth just gave birth to you. Yeah. So, rain comes. Dark shirt. <sighs> what do you think about the lava tunnel? It's nice, right? We are going to the tortoise farm. Let's go. Uh, Dan here, we're at uh, the Tur tortoise reserve here in Galapagos Islands, Santa Cruz Island in particular. This is the tortoise reserve. And as you can see, there's a big one right there. There's, I don't know how many, we've probably seen 20 here today. And he's one of the bigger ones. Finding his way under the shade of that tree. How do you know when you're in the Galapagos? Because you're at the dock. And a ray swims by. <laughs> So this is the path to a little lagoon in town. As you can see, it's very beautiful. Chung Hoi is taking the lead here. So this is just right in the middle of town almost. Well, it's, it's on the side of town, but you don't have to get in a car, just walk here. And it's beautiful. Looks a little bit like those sinkholes, but this one's filled with water. And there's a dock and everything. Very peaceful little surroundings. There's Chung Hoi. Look, he's a fresh water. We're in a mangrove forest here next to that lagoon. There's four different types of mangroves. Almost like you expect a witch to jump out and curse you or something. The way these branches are all willy nilly. The end of another amazing day in the Galapagos Islands. We swam with sea lions. What a cool day. Dan here. We have just taken the taxi uh, from the city uh, in Santa Cruz, uh, Puerto Araya, and to Playa El Garapatero Beach. Um, it's $40 round trip. 
and um, we're here to see more animals. We're in the Manzanillo area. This is a, a tree that is toxic to people, including the fruit. These little um, apples that are all over the ground. These are what Chung Hui calls the Snow White apples. They put you to sleep. And here we are at the beach. It was maybe a five, ten minute walk. So we're the only ones here on this beach. It's supposed to be flamingos uh, back in some ponds in an estuary behind us that we went to. I took a few photos there, but didn't see any flamingos. So we spent about three hours at uh, Gaira Patera Beach, and here's our driver. Chung Hui said, come at 10 o'clock. Um, we find if we come to the beach at 7, we have about three hours, have the beach all to ourselves, and like clockwork, that's what happened. Here's our driver. So down here we're on the trailhead to Tortuga Bay, Tortoise Bay, and it's about a two kilometer walk from the edge of Puerto Arroyo, Santa Cruz, Galapagos. Come join us. This is the entrance to the National Park, Tortuga Bay. It's kind of a view of Santa Cruz. Chung Hui is registering us to go to Tortuga Bay. We're about halfway to Tortuga Bay. Let's go. So we've reached Tortuga Bay, and as you can see, it's white sand beaches and a little bit of wave. And it spreads out in quite a long distance without many people. So this way to an area where the uh, water is not quite as rough and there's uh, better snorkeling. This sand is really soft on my feet. This might be the most powdery white sand I've ever walked on. Hey, I'll give you a selfie. There I am with my coffee. So after you walk to the end of that white sand beach, you come to this cove. As you can see, it's fairly deserted also. I see one person down there. And it's um, really beautiful. It's a gorgeous spot. This is supposed to be better for swimming than snorkeling. These are little baby sharks. Hey guys. Oh, they're not shot. This is probably in six inches of water. These pelicans. Going for the low hanging fruit here along the shoreline. 
see if we can watch him fish. So this is the end of that little um, bay here. And um, there's a little stop sign, so I'm not going to uh, break the rules here. Um, and so later I'll, we'll see if there's a pathway around the back. On the map it shows flamingos um, and turtles and a couple other things off in this area over here. Um, uh, Tortuga Bay at the very end. Um, but And it looks like there's some walking trails or at least sand behind these uh, mangroves behind me here away from the beach. So maybe uh, there will be a path over there. We'll check. So earlier you were thinking, man, where are all the people? Well, it turns out they show up a little later. There's Chung Hoi over there. She's filming a shark. But you can see the place has become popular fairly quick after about 11 in the morning, actually 10, 1030. It's just uh, somebody got up and joined us, you can see. So when you come out here, come in the morning if you want to pretend like you're a deserted beach. Tones here, it's pretty cool. And this is Tortuga Bay. What is that? Beautiful. Then go to wash the apple for us. This is Andrew Valero, Ecuadorian cuisine right on the waterfront across from the fish market, the first fish market I showed you. It has a nice uh, second story balcony uh, so you can look out at the harbor and try some Ecuadorian fare. And we'll continue on down as far as going. And then further along down Charles Darwin, you see the red tuna there on the corner. More souvenir shops. And then here you have a La Garapata, another restaurant. And then there's the Galapagos Bongo Bar and La Panga Discoteca. And they have a pool table here, happy hour. And it's right on the water. A couple more blocks down you have the rock I'm looking at now and then which is a happy hour place you catch a lot of people there at happy hour people watching and other restaurants with five dollar lunch specials which seems to be the thing in Ecuador and as we cross the street is the dock the, the main uh, dock where you see all the seals uh, sleeping on the benches Walked another half a block down. The dock is on our, you're looking at it now, it's still on our left. 
And um, but if you continue to walk down Charles Darwin here, you'll find all of the places where you buy tickets to the other islands. Most of the ferries are about thirty dollars. Like we're on San Santa Cruz Island here. Uh, the lar this is the largest city in the Galapagos, and um, we bought our tickets. Tomorrow we go to Isabella, um, and that bright light you see in the distance here, if you keep walking down uh, Charles Darwin, is a, I wouldn't call it a full-fledged supermarket, but it's uh, the, certainly the largest one here. And here's the tourist pier. This is where the tourists all come in from boat tours or other parts of the island. Um, this is also where you find the seals on the dock and so we're gonna walk out there. And here's the sea lion as promised. They're almost here every night. Um, they give them free alcohol so they usually come and get liquored up and pass out on the on the park benches. I'm kidding, obviously. And out at the end of the dock is the ever-present pelican standing watch. They just peer down into the water below the dock and look for their preferred meal of the evening. As you can see the fish swimming around there. Okay, so that concludes our tour of the, of the Santa Cruz, the main city here, Puerto Arroyo. So it's about 6 a.m. on Santa Cruz Island, Galapagos, and we're catching a ferry over to Isabella. So we spent about a week here. It's a wrap. Love the place. Recommend it. Uh, do the Galapagos. Really, it's been a fascinating place. And um, signing out.